In this lesson, we're going to be talking about the coagulation and flocculation process. And here I want to do a quick demonstration of just how coagulation and flocculation works. Well, as you can see, we have here negatively charged colloids in a jar that we might use for jar testing. Now, most of the particulate matter or the non-settlable particulate matter in surface water are carry a negative charge with them. Well, what we do to neutralize these negatively charged particles is we add a coagulant such as alum or aluminum sulfate. And when we add the positively charged coagulant, we end up neutralizing the negatively charged particles. And that coagulation takes place in about one to two seconds. Well, once the charges are neutralized, these particles can begin to flocculate together. And they start by forming what's called microflock. And then they, as the coagulation process continues, they become macroflock and become a size that can ultimately settle out. So by mixing these negatively charged particles, we can then get them to together and then ultimately flock together. Well, once they come together, we then can add another chemical, polymer, and that polymer helps keep that flock together. And it bridges the microflock to form a macroflock that ultimately can be settled in the sedimentation basin. So the coagulation and flocculation process impacts the effectiveness of the sedimentation process, which we'll talk about in the next lecture. Well, here we have what's called a flocculator, and most flocculators consist of three distinct basins that are separated by baffles. And each flocculation chamber has a different mixing energy. And as you can see, in the stage one flocculation chamber, you have high mixing energy, where the particles are moving around very quickly. In the second stage, the particles have gotten bigger because they've flocked together or agglomerated, and the mixing energy gets lessened, so we have medium mixing energy. And the purpose of that is so we don't break the flock apart. And then finally, in the third chamber, we have low mixing energy, and that low mixing energy uh, allows the flock to continue to get bigger and form a flock that will be able to settle in the sedimentation basin. And as the flock gets bigger, we want the mixing energy to be less and less so that the flock does not come apart. So notice here in this third stage chamber, we've seen the particles even get bigger as they attach with one another. This flock is now ready to settle in the sedimentation basin.